Hi guys and welcome back to our channel. First of all, we we reached the 1,000 subscribers and thank you guys for supporting us. For today's video, we're gonna be talking about something that Bebe owns. Oh, yeah, we're still in the pr process of buying, but yes. Yeah, so if you wanna know what is this and if you are really curious, just keep on watching. Well, this is the BMW i3. Uh, we decided to finally do a review after I get some time and own the vehicle. I've owned it for four going on five months here right now. And the car is wonderful. It's fantastic. Never, yeah, I got it used. It's a 2015 model. Right now it's 2019. Uh, operates like I expect a car. It's, you have, let's see here. Turn it on and turn it off. Sometimes that one trips me up a little bit. There, I'm about to completely shut it off. And I just get out. And of course, then you hit the beeper and it turns off and on. Alright, so to turn it on, I always step on the brake, but I think you can just do it. Yeah, you can turn it on without hitting the brake, but to change gears, this is the trick of this car. You have this knob up here, and it is, it's odd at first, but after you had it for a while, it's intuitive, so there you are in reverse. Oh, come on. There you are. Blue. My mistake. Reverse. This one doesn't have the backup camera it's sonar. So that would start beeping if that thing go on there too. And the other thing too, when you put it in reverse, the passenger mirror, which is kind of nifty when you go in reverse, the mirror orients down so you can see better. I want to put it in park, you just hit the park button, it goes straight into it. And then you got all your other controls here for operating the vehicle. You have auto daylight running over here. Uh, there we go. Yeah, auto daylight. I just leave it on there so it just turns off and on automatically. And that's that. You Down here you have your fuel door because this is the range extender model. It's the BMW i3 Rex with the range extender. So here, I'll just go ahead and pop that open. I'll pop them in the front compartment and the rear. There you are. All the hatches are open. And the usual stuff. The glove box I like a lot in this car. Opens upwards. Kind of neat. And then you have all this stuff here. Open and close. Anyways, so we're going to head out of the vehicle, open it all up, everything up, and then let it go, close it all up. All right, this is all the exterior of the BMW i3. This is the fuel tank, it's on the front. Patch side door, the thing I love about this car, there's no car keys in the way, that's where you get in it, so it's not as inconvenient to think. Rear windows do not close or uh, open and close. It's a uh, downside, but still a pretty neat car. All the seats are heated. This here is where we torque the car up. It's this style of port. I don't know what it is. I wish it did my homework better. There's a light here that flashes when it's charged yellow. And then I believe it's blue when it's fully recharged. The, the tires in the car is uh, an odd tire. It's real big, but it's very narrow like a bicycle. There's the rear storage area. This is how you access the, the car here to get into the engine room and stuff. Over there. And the other side, the driver's side, imagine that. These cars. All right, the steering wheel controls. Volume up, volume down, the talk stuff, cell phone, this controls a lot of other little functions. That is a downside of this car here. The radio and stuff's really clunky to go through. They have this weird selector, and you run through the menu. It's odd, I don't really like it that much, but it's how they do it here at BMW. And this is your cruise control stuff. This is all pretty normal standard stuff. All right. Okay, well, there are pros and cons with any purchase here. Now, the electric car here so far, it's been a great purchase. I like how uh, gasoline prices are starting to go up. So I'm going to be driving this here to 
work here basically for the rest of spring and summer here very shortly because I hate, hate buying gasoline. Especially when you can buy uh, electricity. Uh, here where I live, I have um, the power company's called Salem Electric. It's 10 cents per kilowatt hour. It's a flat rate, which is nice. Other, that's the thing that kind of different with other power companies. Um, some of them will charge you more at a certain time of the day and they'll charge you less at like night, whatever it works, I have no clue. But I heard have it where they charge you more per kilowatt hour than this. But here where I live, power company, it's 10 cents a kilowatt hour, it's great. It's a flat rate, so it doesn't matter if it's day or night, it's all at the same rate. So this ends up being around 40 to 50 dollars a month to drive in electricity expenditures. I can spend that in a week going to and from work and gasoline only. So that's one nice thing there. Maintenance on an electric car, I'm going to tell you what they are. Um, I changed the battery in my key fob because I got it used, it was dying. And that's it. That's with other scheduled mail, uh, maintenance, not mail. Uh, this does have a uh, range extender generator. So I guess technically it's a plug-in hybrid, but primarily this functions all battery. That's how it was designed and made from BMW to be all electric. But having the range extender is nice when that kicks in and it's about equal um, for the battery and the gasoline part of it there. So I get anywhere from 50, um, 60 to 70 miles of range depending on how I drive and conditions and if I have the, you know, the heat pump on. Uh, that's how it heats and cools is with the heat pump. <laughs> but obviously like right now the temperatures outside I don't really need it on so my range is actually more toward the 70 and even 80 mile range but again it depends on traffic conditions and how I'm driving. Uh, the gasoline engine that's all the normal stuff oil spark plugs air filter but because I hardly ever use it and it's primarily on the electric uh, the electric motor doesn't require hardly any maintenance at all there's no it, it's fantastic I haven't had to get my hands dirty or do anything I love it I love that a lot that's really nice I've always owned a beater car and I had one new car previously before in the past and I was always taking the dealer to do the maintenance um, so in the long run for this car, as long as the electricity price to stay around 10 cents a kilowatt hour and drive primarily on the electric thing, it'll be a lot cheaper. Now, charging your electric car, this is where another thing that'd be a con for you. If you don't have access to uh, a plug-in port that's 240 volts, that can be an issue. Because charging this at 120 volts, it will take you uh, over a day, a whole 24 hours and then some. 120 volts is basically a trickle charge real slow. I installed a a 20 amp service at 240 volts and the charge would take 16 volts. I mean amps, not volts. Amps, I'm sorry guys. 20 amps, the charge takes 16 amps and I'm able to charge this thing when I'm running on the generator. Uh, that last leg when I get into the garage and be fully recharged in eight hours, which to me, that's fine. That suits my life. I don't care, it takes eight hours. My phone, same thing it can be 10 percent when i get home i don't care how long it takes when i plug it in and go to sleep at night when i wake in the morning it's fully charged i'm happy i don't care so that's a nice thing with this now this thing does have rapid charge capability but because of that weird portal i showed you earlier it's hard to find the one that's on uh the nissan leaf is more standard and I, that's more available throughout areas but that just might be my area here in salem oregon they just might not have that charger relatively available. It's, a, it's an oddball one for them or for this area, I mean. Um, that covers the charging. That covers uh, the electric needs. Uh, your power bill is going to go up 40 to 50 bucks, depending on how much you drive, but you're not buying gasoline. That's great. Uh, as for char uh, traveling, this one I can go, because I can top off on gasoline, I can keep frog hopping out further and further with my range, because I have a total range of anywhere from 120 to 140 miles-ish. And that's really any car because you're not going to know the exact range perfectly because again if you live uphill and you drive like a maniac you're not going to have as much range or longevity in it there with the available charge and fuel in your tank yeah yeah, yeah. like i said earlier you can use a regular 120 volt outlet in this car but you ain't charging it up anytime soon like you want to be fully charged to go to work tomorrow you're going to need a bigger beefier charger uh, 240 volts uh, and, and when you're out and about, we have made use of electric charging stations. There's plenty of apps and services that do those things. Uh, Blink in this area is pretty popular, and there's other ones. 
and they're fantastic. They seem to be um, on the higher end, it's still 240 volts hitting the car, but they're hitting you with far more amperage. So you're able to charge a car in like four hours, three hours. I mean, it also depends on how dead your battery is as well. But I was able to fully recharge this here, driving from Salem to Portland in about three hours. I was at the VA, so it took a while there with some a lot of appointments, and then we had to go do other things there too. Uh, so it just sat there at a blink charging station there and was fully recharged and came back. It was fantastic, really. <laughs> Uh, but for the most part there, if you live within, uh, yeah, 120 miles, if that can get you to work and back and you have a little more extra to play with there, an electric car is actually fine. You really don't need 300 miles to go around your whole day. Most people don't drive 150 miles out one way and drive 150 miles back. That's just, I, I don't want to drive that much myself personally. Uh, but there probably are a few people that are the exception to that. There always is. But most people live within where a electric car will get you to and from work, no problem with uh, the electric charge only. But the electric car, I would advise if it works for your life and you can get a 240 volt charger at your house and you live and work within, you know, 60 miles of your home every day, if that's enough to get you to work and back, it's great. Uh, the other thing too with an electric car, um, it works just like your cell phone. You plug it in, and it was like, oh, it was 10% or near dead, and now you have half charge, and now say I want to go to the store real quick. You just unplug it and go, and come back and plug it back in when you get to the house. It's great. And not having to deal with the rigmarole of the gas, uh, the gas station is real nice. <laughs> it's fantastic. I almost forgot the gas station there. I have to show up there once in a while at my motorcycle, my other car that I drive to work, and this one. Oh, that's the other thing too. Uh, the winter time, this wasn't that great because I was using the heat pump a lot there to make the heat because it's so cold outside there. So I started taking my gasoline powered car to work. But the winter time, the fuel price was cheaper. Ugh. But now it's finally warming up and I can use this puppy a lot easier. And I didn't have the ability to charge at work too. If you can charge at work, that's even better. <laughs> oh. oh boy. Anyways, I hope this wasn't too much ranting. <laughs> Video, don't forget this video a thumbs up so, and hit the like button yeah if you liked it yes and comment down below if, I ran it too long <laughs> comment down below if you were using or you own an electric car share us your thoughts about having an electric car and the club. It's great. yes and don't forget <laughs> to hit the subscribe button as well as the bell for you to be always updated whenever we upload new videos so once again guys thank you for supporting us and see you on our next oh, video i've got to start for the old head <laughs> okay good to go <laughs> bye, bye, -bye.